Hello everybody, today I'm going to explain the solution to the problem multiplication table from the CSS problem set. So in this problem we are given a number n and we are also given a grid of size n that is constructed according to the pattern that can be seen in this part here. So we can notice for example that on the first line we have the numbers 1, 2, 3 and so on. On the second line, we start from 2 and we go on in a step of 2 and so on. So as you can see, as we increase the uh, number of the line, the step at which the values increase is also bigger. So now we want to sort these numbers and find the uh, number in the middle after we do this. So in this example that we are given here, uh, after sorting all of the n squared numbers, the median is 3. Now, how do we actually find this median? Because we have a lot of numbers and uh, it might be more difficult to find the median that you would expect. So, uh, of course, we can't just generate every single number out there as uh, this would mean that we would have to sort an array of n squared values and this would be way too slow and as a result we would get a TLE. Now we need to think at uh, how to do it in a smarter way. So a very important part that we can see is that every single line is sorted in increasing order. So if we were to find the median in an increasing array we could have just uh, relied on the median values and uh, we would be done. But uh, uh, in this problem we are talking about a 2D grid and each of the lines is, is sorted in increasing order. By the way, you can also apply the same thing for columns as they are symmetric as you can notice here. Now, uh, I, for these kind of problems, let's think at uh, something different instead of finding the median. So let me define something like f of x to be the number of integers in the array less or equal than x. So number of values less or equal to x. Now this is likely much easier to compute because even if we were to just uh, do something like uh, the very brute force algorithm, we can always iterate through the, through the grid and see how many of these values are smaller or equal than x. But there is also one more important property that uh, this function has. It, it is easy to uh, prove that f of x plus one is always greater or equal than f of x because uh, f of x plus 1 will include f of x but will also include the number of values that are equal to x plus 1. So f of x plus 1 is f of x plus the frequency of x plus 1. And these are both uh, positive. So it is clear that uh, this property is true. Now, the most important consequence of this property is the fact that uh, given that this function is now increasing, we can now use binary search to uh, find the smallest value of x such, as, such that f of x is greater or equal to n squared over 2 plus 1. Why do we care about this position n squared over 2 plus 1? Because in an array of n squared values, assuming that we index it from 1, the median will be placed at the position n squared over 2 plus 1. For example, for uh, n equal 3, we would have uh, 9 over 2 plus 1, which is 5, which is uh, true according to the problem statement and the example given there. So, how do we perform this binary search because as I said earlier we can't just scan through all of the n squared values. So what we need to do is to 
use the property that each line is sorted in increasing order. So let me do another drawing and expand the grid to somewhat of a bigger grid. So let's say we have five lines because n is always odd. So uh, we need to also consider this because otherwise it would be a bit more complicated as uh, we would have two medians. But here we always have a single median. So now I'm going to draw all of these things. And now we can reduce the binary search over all of the grid to a binary search for each line. And for example, what I mean by that is that uh, f of x from the previous example, or more like from the previous uh, uh, written notes, is equal to the sum of another function. So let's say f2, which has two parameters, and I will say f2 of x and i. So uh, f2 of x and i is the number of time is the number of x's we have, uh, the number of values uh, less or equal to x that we have on a line or on a certain line. So, uh, for example, uh, if we want to co compute f of uh, 7 on this grid, we can say that it's f2 of 7 and 1 plus f2 of 7 and 2 and so on. So it is easy to see that uh, we can uh, reduce this to a sum of uh, uh, function values. Now, the important thing about this uh, F2 of uh, X and Y is that it's very easy to compute. As now we can just say that F2 of X and Y is the minimum between N because if x is very big, we can't just take more than n values. And actually, x over i. Uh, and the reason why this happens is that on line i, we know the rate at which we increase uh, the values. So for example, on the second line, if we want to compute the f of 7, 2, then it's going to be 3, as we have 3 values that are smaller than 7, and the fourth one would already be bigger and the rate of increase is always i for line i. Now, all we have to do with these uh, values and these functions is that we uh, just need to implement the binary search on the answer and then uh, at each step check if it's greater or smaller than the target we are seeking. Even though I went through, uh, I would say, somewhat more explanations than usual, it is because I believe this is one of the most important examples of binary searches over the answer. And I also wanted to showcase how can we simplify the math to such a degree that we now only have to talk about uh, primary school math at most, or maybe early middle school math. And you will see also that the implementation is very short. So uh, as you can see, I got accepted with this code. And basically what I do here is that I uh, find the target, as I mentioned, and um, at this step of the binary search, I check if f of mid is greater or equal than the target. And for each uh, iteration of the function, I compute the other function I described in the statement, f2 of uh, mid and i, which is, uh, as I said, minimum between n and that ratio. And it's very important to use long longs for all of these computations as the number of squares in the grid can become as big as 10 to the 12, if I'm not mistaken, since the maximum n is 10 to the 6. So in order to conclude, uh, in order to solve this problem, you need to use the fact that the grid is sorted on each line and that if we were to want to find the number of values smaller or equal than a certain value, this function is increasing, which allows us to do a binary search over the answer and use the property that each line has. So if you enjoyed watching this video, please like the video, share my channel and subscribe to it as it helps me a lot to 
uh, deliver more and more high quality content in the future as I seek to uh, upload more of these educational videos. And if you have any suggestions, feedback or anything you might want to say, please write it in the comments. I will reply to every single comment and I will make sure to include all of the suggestions in the future videos in order to improve my content constantly. So once again, thanks for watching this video and see you next time. Cheers.